go-getters never know boo. DJs put it in, see what it do. You put all this to kick back, to relax, to All right, what do you want? I'm gonna make you look handsome. Good luck with that. It's gonna be easy. Good how luck do you, How do you like it normally? I like it short. You like it short? Yeah, make it nice and short, but sharp. Short and sharp. Yeah. I've been cutting since fifth grade. Yeah, how come this is the first time I'm hearing about it? What's the best thing about being the Hopkins coach? You know, I think it's two things. You know, one is the opportunity to work with the guys. I mean, I get to work with some fantastic young guys and uh, from all different walks of life, you know, to, to get up every morning and go to work, you know, in my opinion, for them. I mean, that's yeah. ideally who who I work for, who our staff works for, is for those guys. You know, that's a, a, a unique and special opportunity. The other, the other thing I would tell you that's great is uh, I get to be a part of something that's just so much bigger than than me and all of us. You know, you look at, at Hopkins and the Hopkins history and tradition, and there's so many great players and great coaches, and to just be a part of that is, uh, you know, it's a real privilege. With that, though, comes some stress. What's the toughest part of the job? The challenge now, maybe less the X's and O's, you know, and, and young people, they're different than, than, than you and I. Yep. They're, they're, the things that are important to them are different. Uh, I would tell you they're more well-rounded than, than we were. Um, they have greater pressures than we had. Um, so I, I would say that is, is a real challenge to, to continue to evolve and, and to keep reinventing yourself and your team year in and year out. When I talk to people about you, they always say the word competitor. And the competitive fire is built somewhere. Where was that built for you in life? Uh, you know, I, I, I come from a home where my father was a, uh, you know, a competitor. He was an athlete. He was a baseball guy growing up. So, you know, he promoted sports uh, in our home. Uh, I come from a divorced home. Mm -hmm. So I, you know, my dad was my guy. Right. He watches all your games, doesn't he still? Uh, he still does, yeah. He still does from home. You know, he coached me in baseball, and, and one of the, you know, many lessons he taught me was that if you're going to do something, do it right. Yep. If you're going to do it, do it to the best of your ability. And if you're going to do it, do it to win. Not at all costs, but do it to, you know, for the betterment of the team and the betterment of yourself. and. You know, I've always felt that way. I'm heading to Sammy's tonight. <laughs> there's a uh, there's a dish named after you, the veal petro. Yeah, well, I guess when you eat a lot of veal, they what they, is the veal they, petro? They they name a dish after you if you what eat, is it? eat enough. It's uh, veal in voltini. So it's veal, and uh, it's wrapped around uh, bruschette, spinach, oh. spinach, and mozzarella. That's right up my alley. Yeah, well, clearly if my if my name's on it, it was right up mine too. <laughs> If you weren't coaching at Hopkins, what do you think you'd be doing? That's a good question. Well, I, I'll be honest with you. If I was ever to die and be reincarnated, I would love to come back as the lead singer of a rock and roll band. You would? I'm telling you. I what kind of rock? Uh, oh, our, our, our rock. Yeah, you know. real rock. Real rock. Yeah. I, I went to the You U really would want to be a singer? Oh, my God. I would be a horrible one, but I would love to do that. I went to the U2 concert at uh, M&T Bank Stadium, and I was amazed at how one guy could like impact yeah. so many people. Light an entire stadium uh, It was up. unbelievable. I mean, it was actually surreal. So I, I, I would think that would be pretty cool. What I would like to do is something that allows me to be competitive um, and, and be around young people, but something that would allow me to be around my kids more. And I love spending time with our guys here, but I spend more time with other people's children than I do my own. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, sometimes you lay in bed at night and you, you hope you're doing the right things, and you know you're not uh, you're not missing too much. What do you enjoy doing with the boys? I, I just like hanging out with them. You know the, the language that they use. My son told me the other day that something I did was whack. Was whack? Yeah, and I was like, really? I mean, what does that mean? My other son told me something uh, that I did looked tough. Looked tough? Yeah. Like what two, was it? Uh, it was a shirt I had or something. And uh, rarely do they compliment me, by the way, on my wardrobe. So. Um, you know, they think dad's an, an old fuddy-duddy and uh, a little bit nerdy. If this haircut comes out really good, you think you would uh, wear tighter jeans or no? I can't get in those jeans that you wear, those skinny pants. If that, you can that, get them? No, nah, that's not my look. 
Who's been the biggest coaching influence on your life? I would have never maybe admitted this when I was a, a, a player here, but Don Zimmerman. Yeah. Uh, you know, great the, teacher, right? Oh my God, great teacher, but you know, a stickler for preparation and you know fundamentals and you know doing doing things the right way. Um, so you know, I, I was blessed there. Uh, you know, Bill Tierney has has been a mentor. You know, how blessed was I to have him as a an assistant coach yeah. and then someone who would you know, take the time, you know, here he is a head coach, national champion, and he's talking to, you know, a first year, second year, third year assistant coach at Hopkins and, you know, sharing his thoughts, beliefs, and experiences. Um, you know, and then the other one I, w I would tell you is, is Coach Belichick. Um, I learned something from him every time I talk to him. You know, and I think maybe the biggest thing I've learned is that, from him, is that you can learn something from everyone. Yep. You know, and whenever I talk to him, he's always looking for information. He's always trying to, to find something from other people that's going to help his program. He's asking you as many questions as you're asking him, right? A absolutely. You know, and he is extraordinarily inquisitive. And, you know, he was the greatest coach in maybe sports. And, uh, you know, all he wants to do is f find a better way. Yeah. And I really, you know, have learned a lot from him and through our conversations and, uh, and, and obviously developed a, a great friendship with all three of those guys I mentioned. What do you think of the new roles in lacrosse? My jury's still out. Um, I don't mind the clock. I, I don't. I think it helps our, our, our game. Uh, I, I hate the dive. Um, I, Why do you hate I, the and dive? And I was for it because I just think we've put officials in a really challenging spot. I just, spot. I just think it's such a subject, subjective call that it changes week to week, game to game, player to player. Um, I think the new box, the smaller box has a, a greater impact on the game than people realize. What do you think of them? I don't want to agree with you, but I do on everything. I think the whole idea of protecting the goalie, I don't know any goalies that were really ever injured in the dive. Do you? No, I don't. I'd like to see a landing zone if they have it. Let's put it that That'd way. That'd be tough too, though, because then you're you're also then putting in the referee's hands to well, say, did he land in the zone? Well, but it's not hard if there's a painted area and he landed and he landed in it. Doesn't matter if the ball went in, didn't go in. If he lands in that area, it's no goal. If he lands outside of it, it's a goal. You good with gel? Yeah, you know I'm good with gel. I can't believe I allowed you to do this. This is probably the best haircut you've ever had. All right, I get to look here. Yeah. All right, so this is it, huh? Oh, I could deal with that. You look like a million bucks. You did a nice job. I look, like look, it. Look, look at the face. I want to see you, the you back. Want, I want to see. You wonder why? You wonder why I take so much time? You see the blend? <laughs> look at the blend. All right, my friend. Skinny jeans next. No thanks. I'll pass.